Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Real Life Fisherman. We're gonna do a how-to video today. Today we're gonna change the water impeller on this Mercury 150 and uh, gonna go over step-by-step -step how to do it and what tools you're gonna need and everything. And uh, it uh, will apply to a lot of other Mercs as well. The 115, the 90 and 75 are almost identical. Uh, even the 60s, 50s, and 40s are pretty close to the same thing. So uh, we'll do another video on those ones. Uh, not much difference though, really, to be honest. So follow along and check it out. All right, so we're gonna go over what you're gonna need for this. Of course, you're gonna need the water impeller kit. I would get the whole kit. You don't need the housing unless yours has gone through gravel and it's really scratched up. You're gonna need a three quarter open end wrench. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket and a quarter inch drive ratchet and extension. You're gonna need a half inch drive uh, socket and ratchet. I like to pull the prop off when I'm doing this. Of course, normally you'd be doing this on a whole service and uh, you would probably have the prop off anyway to drain the gear lube. So uh, you're gonna need a inch and a 1 16th socket and breaker bar or ratchet. And just in case it doesn't want to come off right away and it's stubborn you're gonna need a dead blow mallet you're also gonna need some uh, marine grease and then uh, to make life easier to make life easier on yourself you're gonna need a, a little chair right here a little rolling chair it makes it life a lot easier you can do this on your knees or sitting on the ground but it's a lot easier on the chair and then to work on the uh, impeller after you pull the lower unit off I have a little table made up with a sawhorse and a notch cut out for you to put the, uh, the lower unit into while you work on it. Okay, first thing you're going to have to do before you get started is uh, decide whether you're going to be doing this by yourself or if you can have somebody come out and assist you for just a quick minute. Uh, reason being is you either have to decide if you're going to take the, the uh, lower unit off while the uh, control box is in forward or neutral. I like to take them off in neutral. They seem to go back on easier for me. Uh, the thing with taking it off in neutral is you have to have possibly, sometimes you get lucky and they slide right back on. But sometimes you have to have somebody come out and bump the ignition so that the, the drive shaft splines will line up and it will slide back up. Now, if you don't have anybody, you can take it off with it in forward. And what that allows you to do is turn the, turn the prop shaft as you're putting it back on manually and line up the splines. Most manuals will tell you to do it in forward, but again, over time and experience, it seems to me it's a lot easier to do it in neutral and have somebody bump start it for you. Um, I have less hangups that way. So check it out and uh, see how it's done. All right, first thing you're gonna wanna do after you decide whether you're gonna leave it in forward or neutral, trim it up to a comfortable angle for you to work at. Of course with this one, it's got a kicker, so the kicker rudder's in your back, so that's always fun. I like to work on this side, I guess because I'm right-handed, I don't know if the lefty might wanna be on the other side. I'm going to pull the prop off, it makes it lighter and easier to work with. Uh, if you're doing this as part of your regular service, uh, 300 hour or 3 year service, which you should be doing, uh, you probably have the prop off anyway. I just didn't want to make a super long video with the whole complete service when um, you're just going to want to know how to do this impeller change. Alright. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do, pull this little rubber plug cap off. You take your half inch socket, ratchet. There's a bolt right here. Let you drop that zinc anode so that you can access this bolt underneath here, that's the one that's hidden and a lot of people will forget about. 
You'll need a 916 socket to take that off. 916 socket to take that one off. Some of them will have a stud with a nut, 5.8 socket, but pretty much, like I said, there are, some things are a little different. Most of them are pretty close to being the same. Take that off. Take your three quarter open end wrench. You won't have room for a uh, the ratcheting end or a socket on this. I like to leave that one hanging on by a couple threads. I'll come around the other side here, take these off. These ones are kind of fun because they won't come off until you drop the lower unit. Some of them is completely off, so you drop it down and they fall on the ground. You like that? Also, you gotta remember when you go to put that back on, you gotta drop that in there before you put it all the way back up. Some of these can be tricky and some of them can go right back on. They're uh, not that difficult to do, but they can give you a fit. They can become hard to get back on. Um, so again, like any of my other how-to videos, guys, if you don't feel comfortable doing this after watching this, please take it to a shop. Let a professional do it. Um, you know, don't mess up anything yourself trying to do this. If it looks like something that you'd rather pay somebody to do, please do that. So now let's see if she'll cooperate. Yep, and there go the nuts. Be sure to grab them. Now I'm gonna take this last one off. I leave that one on just so it doesn't fall completely off. Now you're just gonna slide this thing right on out. Like that. Uh, and then carry it over to your uh, your bench or prop it up somewhere to work on it. Okay, so this is what a lower unit looks like off the motor. This is your drive shaft. This is your shift shaft right here. You don't want to mess with this. You want to leave that right where it is. If you bump this around here, it will shift into forward or reverse, which will make putting it back on a nightmare. Uh, this is your speedo tube pickup for your speedometer, water-driven water speedometer. Uh, this is your impeller housing here, uh, the seal here, and then this is your uh, water tube right here. So you, sometimes that can get stuck on the motor, but you can put it there. And you're gonna use your 10 millimeter and you're gonna take these four bolts off. This comes in the kit, so you're just gonna to wanna to rip that off. Sometimes they're pretty dry rotted and that'll cause you some uh, problems. Okay, that's your water impeller. As you can see, it's kind of oblong. So these right here, this is why they tell you to do it every three years or 300 hours. These can get set in them. It's what's called set. And they will stay in this shape when you go to turn it and they won't straighten all the way back out here, making good contact, which will make you lose water pressure. Also, if you've ran through a lot of stuff, these will be real scarred up with some gravel. Um, he hasn't used his boat very much, so this one's not in a horrible shape, but it's very good to change these out. You don't get really, uh, you don't get to pull over on the side of the freeway if you start to overheat on a, on a boat. All this is new in the kit. You'll get a, you'll get a new keyway. 
uh, you'll get a new seal and then this is your wear plate uh, got some sand in there but nothing bad that looks normal it's not all scarred up you'd have big gouges in there if you ran through a lot of uh, gravel or sand it'll uh, have a lot of that in there and then your uh, bottom gasket here uh, also you want to make sure you'll see this hole here when we go to line everything back up you want to make sure that that is not if you put this these on the opposite way that will be covered so you want to make sure you don't do that if there's any kind of gravel or sand in here you want to clean all that out sometimes there'll be a lot of stuff in here um, if it's bad or if you've gone through a lot of stuff again you'll want to clean all that stuff out wipe it all out get it nice and clean make sure all your seal is good you're not getting any leaks or anything also inspect in here as well for any this is not in the kit but you can get this in a kit in a complete kit or or separately this is your impeller housing so all of your uh these are extra seals not going to be used here this is for uh out drive for an io what you're going to need these are your two gear loop seals here your new uh, keyway and uh, your new shaft seal and your new uh, well this helps you uh, put it on right here and i'll show you that in a minute here's your new wear plate and gaskets that's wrong as you can see it's covering that hole and these are all a little off so be careful, you can put this on upside down. That is correct. Keep these all nice and lined up like that. All right, we're gonna put this keyway on. A nice little dab of grease, hold it in place. hold it in place right there there's a flat spot there put that grease in that though hold it there also put a little bit of grease not a lot it'll help with the uh, sliding this down now you're gonna take your new impeller your impeller housing and you're gonna put that won't go in there right so yeah, you gotta twist it in there so twist it, I twist mine clockwise. So you just put it in like this and twist as you're putting it in like that. And to make life a little bit easier on yourself, there's that notch there, which goes on the keyway. Try to get it pretty close to where it needs to be. Doesn't have to be perfect, but pretty close to where it needs to be. Okay. Now we're going to slide this down over the shaft. And you're going to slide it down. And this is where lining that shaft up kind of helps out. You want to try to get that to drop right on. Sometimes you got to play with it. There we go. So it slid on there. Notice it's not quite lined up, that's okay. You can go ahead now and twist this, hold the shaft and kind of twist it back and drop it down on there. You wanna put a little dab of some blue Loctite on the threads. You wanna hand start all of these, get all four in. Tighten this down. Now here's your new uh, impeller drive shaft seal here. That goes over there. That's what this little plastic thing is for, this little collar. Slide that over. I'm gonna push that all the way down until it 
kind of pushes out around the edge. Maybe you see that, like that. Push that all the way down. And that's it. We're gonna put some grease on our splines. Put them on our shift shaft lines there and on the top. And just a little there and on the water pickup. Now we're ready to see if it'll slide right back on. Cross your fingers. Hope she goes right back on. But if not, I'll show you what to do. If it goes right back on, sorry guys, I'm not gonna take it off just to show you how it can go wrong. <laughs> Like I said, it, it can it can put up a fight, but just keep at it, and uh, I'll I'll, sh I'll talk about what would what to do if you run into that scenario where it doesn't want to line back up. Okay, guys, this is what you're looking at, looking up underneath the motor where we're going to be sliding the uh, lower unit back on. This right here, that is your shift shaft. That's where your shift shaft's going to go in. This right here is where the drive shaft this goes way up in there to the power head. That has to go all the way up in there and those are the splines you're gonna wanna line up. Also the shift shaft splines you're gonna have to line up. Uh, if they don't quite line up, again, you might have to have somebody come out and help you and wiggle the control box and try to barely put it into forward, but not all the way into forward so the splines will line up. And then this right here is your water uh, tube. That's gonna put on that uh, little rubber coupler there. Uh, all those things have to line up in order to get your lower unit back on. So uh, that's the struggle right there. Uh, this is kind of the hard part. Sometimes though it goes easy. So cross your fingers and we'll see how it goes. You wanna get one of the uh, one nut and washer kind of ready. At the ready. Put that drive shaft up in there. Get your knee under it. kind of twisted it there to get it to kind of go further up kind of twist it one way or the other just a little try to get it to go further up and then there we go just slip back up in there now the only thing we got left here here's what i'm talking about with the shift shaft so we know it went up in there on the drive shaft uh it went it went quite a bit up so now what we got an issue for here is the shift shaft so what we need to do is have my lovely assistant my wife she's gonna have to put the camera down here but what she's gonna go up there and do is wiggle the control handle but not going all the way into forward and hopefully the gopro will get this thing sliding right back up Okay, so this is uh, this is what can happen here. So what happened now is it went too far, too far forward, and now this is in forward gear. It's no longer in neutral. So we have to move the shift shaft and get it back to neutral. That's neutral right there. You can move the prop shaft. You can move the prop shaft in either direction. That is neutral. And you'll take just a pair of pliers and slowly turn clockwise the, the shift shaft and try again. Okay, now I need you to bump start it. Okay. Uh, now I need you to do the uh, the shift thing again. Yep, go ahead. Are you moving at all? Okay. There we 
we go. Yep. Okay, now you want to check. We're still in neutral, so that was perfect right there. Uh, I hope you saw that. That sucked up. You're putting pressure on this the whole time with your knee. And uh, when she wiggled the control handle and put it barely into forward, just started to move it out of neutral, it slid right up in there. And then you want to immediately go back to neutral and check your prop shaft that it is still in neutral. Now you're going to take that nut and your washer that you have at the ready and put it on. Remember, you'll have to have it down just a little bit to get your uh, your nut and washer on here on this side. This is why this chair is so nice because you can uh, put your leg underneath it like this and kind of give your arms and hands a break while you're lifting up on this thing the whole time because you, you don't want it to slide back off. Put all these nuts and washers back on here. Like so, grab your three quarter and tighten it all the way up on one of them. Usually the forward one here. And you can let go. Tighten the remaining ones up. Okay. And then one more thing to check before we completely put it all back together is I'm going to have her shift it into forward, into neutral, and in, into reverse and make sure that it's in all the correct gears and nothing jumps. We'll put our bolts back up in here. Good and tight. Make sure all of our nuts are good and tight. Okay guys, well, we got her back on there. Now we got to put our zinc back on and then we're going to hook the muffs up to it, run it, make sure it's pumping good water and that's it. Okay, now we got her all uh, put back together, everything's back on, and we're gonna make sure that this thing's pumping good water and uh, shift through the gears and everything, make sure everything's working right. There we go. We've got a nice steady stream of water, pumping good water. Pulling out the exhaust, which is also a good thing to check. You want to make sure forward that it's spinning clockwise. Good to go. Okay guys, well that's how you change the water impeller uh, on most of the uh, Mercs, the uh, 75s, 90s, 115s, and 150s are all pretty much the same in that regard. Um, like I said, the other ones are, there's a few little things different in the impeller kit. Uh, but pretty much the same. If this helped you, I hope you guys uh, like the video and subscribe if you would. Uh, I put out a lot of content, uh, fishing and how-to stuff. So uh, I appreciate you guys for watching the video and checking out the channel. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.